Hey guys, I'm Sean from the Comics Pals, and I am here live on Thursday at New York Comic Con 2023. And standing next to me is, in my opinion, one of the best writers today, someone who is really breaking ground and doing some really incredible stuff on not just one, but several books. We're talking action comics, we're talking Green Lantern War Journal, we're talking Incredible Hulk. I am standing next to Mr. Philip Kennedy Johnson. How is your con so far? Great, man. It's his first day, but it's off to a good start. Been meeting a ton of fans. Moving some books, having some great conversations. It's been great. Awesome. Glad to hear that. I'm glad that people are treating you well. With the quality of your work so far, that doesn't surprise me. Oh, thank you, man. That's very kind of you to say. Well, I, I, I want to talk about Action Comics because okay. that's been the most impressive thing to me so far is the fact that, I'll admit to you now, I was not a Superman fan. Mm. I couldn't connect. I couldn't find my way into Superman. Mm. When I picked up Action, I was like, wow, here's a father. Here's a guy who cares about the world. Here's a guy who's a champion of the oppressed. And I found that exactly. I couldn't connect with Superman without those things, but now that I feel like they're included, I'm hooked. Yeah, you gotta have that stuff. I mean, I my I wish I could say that my first time connecting with the character was in a comic, but it was actually, at least from what I remember, it was from the, the, the film, the 1978 sure. film. And just the, the aspirational, hopeful, uh, just, God, it was just so powerful and inspiring as a kid, man. Seeing that yeah. just gave me chills. I'm getting right now thinking about it. It's like the feeling of, like, just Christopher Reeve's depiction, like the, the guy who is ultimately powerful, who's also perfectly compassionate and humble and just shows us how best to be human, you know? I Between all that, just like the... The 3D S coming up over your head and like yeah. the, the, the John Williams music and just like making you shake your fist like oh, I just want to be what that is you know yeah I'm trying to get that in every issue and I, I feel like you are I think that this feels like a bridge in a lot of ways between that movie and some of those more aspirational Superman stories because we've had a lot of like oh Superman's a bad guy now you know like yeah, a yeah. lot of media like that and so it feels nice to kind of do a back to basics sort of approach on the character. Is it crazy for you to be writing Superman after having had that reaction to the uh, 78 movie? Yeah, man. I <laughs> Yeah. I mean, when I when I first got the shot, I didn't even pitch for it. Like, they asked me to do it. I, I was not expecting to get a shot like that. I mean, I was I was pitching for something else on a much, much humbler level when I got the call. And I didn't, I did not hesitate. I mean, I was just like, yes, I, I know exactly who Superman is. I have such a clear vision for his voice in my mind. I I just I could not wait to put the Superman that I've that I've wanted to see in the page for so long to put him back on the page and uh, God, it was such a, it was such a huge honor. And I just could not wait to at least try to give readers that same feeling that I had as a kid, you know. Absolutely. And as an adult too. I mean I even now I go, I watch that film, I, I read my favorite of the Superman books. And um, I still get that feeling that makes me want to be more than I am, better than I am. That is the power of Superman. Yeah. It's Absolutely. The weight of it, the weight of writing Superman, there's a responsibility to it that I don't feel in other books. I mean, I'm, I'm always trying to tell a great story. Yeah. I'm always trying to tell a story that has something important at the core of it, something that really matters deeply to me. But when you're not, when you're writing Superman, it's not, it's not just about what you care about. It's about this, it's like this... This, the weight of making a philosophical statement about what it like how best to be human you know yeah absolutely and I, I I think it's interesting that you know there are people who respond to that idea with like oh I just want to see Superman like kick butt I don't care about all the other stuff and it's like well how could you get that out of Superman Superman is about humanity he's yeah. about the only reason the power should be there in the story is to illustrate how incorruptible he is right if he's just kicking ass there's this room is filled with you know 500 characters who can do that you know exactly you know I want to see a Superman who can do who's overpowered who can do anything who can like slam worlds together but you see him you know open the back door of the car after he saves his family and check on the you know tug on the kid's seatbelt make sure everybody's good you know like have a conversation about the kid's toy or um, you know talk to a in the most recent issue, talk to an ex-con he just put away and see how he's doing, how his life is going. You know, it's not about the the bombast. It's about showing us the moments between those moments where he cares about us more than 
more than the, we care about each other, about our, more than we care about ourselves. You know? I would, I would uh, kick myself if I didn't bring this up to you. I loved the Metallo arc. Thank you. Unbelievable. Metallo always appealed to me for whatever reason, but with your story, injecting the humanity and, hey, this is a guy who's actually had a horrible life and kind of was turned into a weapon in, in some ways yeah. um, before he became this. I thought that that was brilliant. And I love the fact that you always seem to be able to find, doesn't matter what book you're working on, you always seem to be able to find the truth of a character and really bring it out and let them express it. And that, to me, is a rare skill. Oh, thank you so much. That, that was the character that I really, I jumped at the chance to do Metallo story. I love that character. And usually we kind of, we know Metallo is kind of what he looks like, you know? Right. Like he's usually, he's just this very powerful image. And I feel like every, for, especially for a character as iconic as Superman, his big nemesis characters should be their opposite in some way. Sure. Um, for Mongol and Warworld, he was, I mean, he's the opposite of the champion of the oppressed. If the champion of the oppressed is Superman, Superman's greatest enemy should be this, like this intergalactic slaver, somebody whose entire existence is about dominance. Right. Um, Metallo is the opposite of Superman in a, in a more visual sense, whereas we always see these iconic moments of Superman, like destroying a gun or deflecting bullets, like Superman versus the gun is a very common theme. Yeah. And um, Metallo, for Metallo, I want to kind of define him as the guy who, who could have had a normal life and instead kind of was given this addiction to violence from a very early age and just addicted to the idea of the gun, you know, seduced by the gun. And over the course of his life, he becomes more and more that gun until he is a living gun himself. So that's, that's the way that I approach that character. And I wanted to show somebody that we, he was definitely not a good guy but we at least see how he became what he is. He's not just a, he's not just a Terminator. You know, he's right. a, he's a, he's a, he's a man. He's a man and dreamt he was a gun. And Superman's way of dealing with him is to say, hey, you can be redeemed. You can be better than you are. Anyone can. And I like that message in the face of a person who was a legitimate threat. Yeah. So I, I appreciated that a lot. Yeah, that message at the end where he's, he believes in him and he still believes that he can be better. You know, like, and he might be wrong. He, we, I'm sure we'll see other stories in which Metallo is doing bad shit again. <laughs> but he believes that he can that he can change. Right. You know, and that's what makes Superman who he is. I, I'd like to shift gears and talk about Green Lantern War Journal because John Stewart is an important character to me, and I know there are a lot of people for whom John Stewart is very important. And so, getting the job to tell stories with that character, what was important for you to sort of express and make sure people know about him? One of the most important elements of that story for me was to make John much more complicated, or to rather to illustrate his complicated sides, because he, he should be that. We've already we've seen him as an architect early on. We've seen him as the as the ex marine. We've seen him as very briefly in little ways. We see that he has had a he had a sister. He has a mother that's very important to him. Um, we've seen his relationships with other lanterns, and I wanted to kind of bring it all together and make a tell a more complete picture of who, of who John is. Yeah. Because I, um, there have been stories in which I am a little frustrated by how one note he seems. And that's, that, that is sometimes unavoidable, especially in the context of a team book. If you're sure. trying to boil everyone down to like a voice in a very short, quippy way, of course we're going to see John like just speaking in a military lingo or being like the hard ass. But there's so much more to him. He's, he's the perfect lantern. Right. Not to say that, I mean, everyone's got their favorite. Everyone who's into like Green Lantern has their, their one that they, like, really love. And I'm not saying that he's better than all the others. What I am saying is that he is the obvious choice to be a Lantern in the way that the, none of the others ever were. Like, he's, he's never the dark horse pick that where we had, he had to, like, show us why he deserves it. It made total sense from the beginning that he deserves it. And he, he showed that with his, his background, his military background, but also that he's an architect also that he was inspired by his mother, the civil rights leader. There's this thing that happens in the military sometimes when a couple of people are having a, a disagreement and a fight is about to go down, they'll take their rank off and throw it on the ground. Oh. Like they're about like, like if, uh, whatever, like if I'm a master sergeant and you're a corporal, like I don't rank you by several levels. Sure. And if we're about to like throw down, I'll be like, you know, Let's do this. <laughs> like I, you know, I don't want to hide behind my rank, and I, oh. I just that is just a John Stewart thing. I just want to see John like ripping his rank off and be like, "Let's do this." 
So I love that. Yeah, he's he is still like the tough guy, but he's also we also see him as the the brilliant architect and the guy that loves his mom and this you know anyway. I'm getting chills again. I love that character. <laughs> Me too. I love this job. <laughs> and it's great that it's great that you're getting the opportunity to tell stories about characters that you love because I feel like writers like you, creators in general like you, who really love these IP characters are the ones who can bring the most out of them. Yeah, so, well, thank you. It's a huge honor to get to. I mean, I, I definitely have my opinions about these characters, and uh, to get to express that in, like, in deep, complicated ways on a page is just such an honor. I don't expect you to answer this question with a character, but when you look at the landscape of DC, when you look at the landscape of Marvel, are there characters that you look at and go, you know what, I have something to say about that person? Yeah, sometimes. Um, let's see, is there a character I can give you? I know the Constantine character really well. Okay. I would love to write Constantine. Um, let's see. I would like to write Dead Man. <laughs> I know that's not a, a name you hear thrown around that much, but Dead Man's cool, man. I, I'm kind of drawn to the creepy guys. I like Constantine, I like Spectre, I like Dead Man. Um, let's see. What else? You hear that, DC? Logan. Oh. I think I could write. I think I could write a dope ass Wolverine. I am ready for that. <laughs> I am so ready for that. Yeah, there's a there's a team book. There's like a World War II era team book I want to do, like an Inglorious Bastard style thing in Marvel sure. Universe. Like a, I got a thing about Nazis. I got a Nazi hang up. <laughs> so I want to. I want like a, like a Nazi kill squad with Marvel characters. World War II. Oh. So Logan being a big part of that, a new Ghost Rider that we're, yeah. about, we're about to introduce Ghost Rider 44 in the pages of uh, Hulk. Right. So I'd love to see him in there too. So yeah, I, a lot of characters. I got to take on Aquaman I want to do. There's a Batman villain I feel very strongly about. There's a lot of stuff I want to do. I'm looking forward to every single bit of it. Thank I you, hope brother. you get the opportunity that. to do those things. Thank you, man. Um, thank you so much for all of your work. It's been amazing. And I'm looking forward to the next decade of Philip wow. Kennedy Johnson comics. Thank you, brother. Thanks so much. So thank you for spending time with us here. Uh, we will be at New York Comic Con all weekend long doing interviews with incredible creators like PKJ. So keep it locked to the Comics Pals YouTube channel. We will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Thank you all.